an exciting day that God has given to us to celebrate, to glorify. And uh, it was a wonderful time along with Aaron, uh, worshiping God and to say, what a friend we have in Jesus. And uh, this is a good thing to say. Our Jesus is our friend. And uh, on this day that the world celebrates the Father's Day, normally in Bethel we say it's as men's day. Uh, and today I want to celebrate your life. I want to celebrate all the dads around. Um, and I want to remember um, our dads who lived with us and who has gone away from us. Um, I want to remember them as well. And I want to thank God for their lives uh, that enabled us to come into this world uh, to be who we are and to glorify God. Uh, some of you are, are praying that um, your parents, uh, your dads, your moms who are not well in different parts of the world will be healed. And I pray along with you uh, that they, they will be healed in Jesus name. And uh, this new month that we have stepped into will be a month of blessing. And I want to release that blessing upon everybody. Uh, as we have got into the spring in New Zealand, I pray that the favor of God will spring forth upon you, upon your family, upon your children, and upon your prayers that you're pouring out uh, in the presence of God. This morning, for a few minutes from now, we are going to hear from God's word, and then Pastor George will pray for the fathers at the end of the service as well. So I'm very much excited uh, because... Uh, He's such a wonderful man of God who is our own man uh, who has been blessed uh, with that prayerful heart. For this morning, I have a very interesting topic. Uh, uh, the topic is the amazing 22. The amazing 22. When we grow older, we want to become younger. Uh, some of us who are very uh, young, especially children, want to grow up to be people who like we are. They want to grow up. They don't want to be called a baby or a child, but everybody of us want to be in our 22 again. And I don't know how, how would I think if I go back to 22 now. And because the things that we have done those years would uh, make us who we are today. So some of us have wasted our time when we were 22 and we wish we could have gone back to the 22. Some of us were stronger. I was strong when I was 22. I'm still strong, but I'm, I'm not as strong as I was 22. I, I was fast. I was quick to run. All those things I used to do. But today, um, I want to not talk about the age 22, but some very important lessons that I learned from the Holy Word when I, 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 I thought about this, uh, this, uh, this word called 22. Genesis chapter number three, verse number 22 is not a, a great start, but that is where everything started trickling down upon us. God says like this, now man has become like us. God says man has become like us. He has, he has the knowledge. He knows what is wrong, what is right. Now he may go and grab the fruit of life. So it's not, not a good place for him to be in the garden of Eden. So God almighty, the heavenly father who created Adam and Eve, had to send them off from the garden. The journey of human race started out of the garden of Eden on that particular day, verse number 22 of chapter number three. But God still loved because we are his children. And he was looking out for men and women who would turn back to God, turn back to the the, the initial plan that we were created. Chapter number five of Genesis and verse number 22 talks about a man called Enoch. Enoch walked with God faithfully. This was the first man in the Bible wherein God puts an adjective into his character. 
and his walk. He walked faithfully before God. He walked faithfully with God. You see, that, that's a wonderful testimony of a father. And Bible says, Enoch was the father of Methuselah. So he was a father and he, he was 65 years old when he started this journey with God. And he walked with God not one, two, three years. He had a consistent walk with God. He walked with God for 300 years. Can you believe that? He walked with God 300 years. My dear fathers, my dear mothers, when we start walking with God, what happened with you know? What happened with Enoch is going to happen with us as well. What happened? Because he walked with God, God took him back. Hey, what a story is that? The, the story that I started off in Genesis chapter number three, verse number 22, God sent Adam and Eve out. But here, God takes one person into him. And his name was Enoch. And Enoch never died. The Bible says God took him back and he never died. What a glorious story in chapter number four, five and verse number 22. I want to go a bit more further. The next 22 is very close to Genesis chapter number five. Genesis chapter number six. Verse number 22, we see an amazing story of this man called Noah. I'll read it for you. Noah did everything. You see that? Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Noah did everything. Fathers, Noah was the dad of three wonderful boys. Those boys were married. And they were not living in a very good place. The world was corrupt. The world was bad. People were doing mistakes left, right, center. But there was a Noah that God has mentioned in the Bible that he did everything just as God said. And God saw what Noah did. And God rescued him out of the destruction. So. Today, we are, in fact, the generation of Adam and Eve. But in fact, we start our history from Noah and his children. So that's another beautiful chapter number six and verse number 22. So that verse number 22 is ringing again and again. God, who pushed man out of the Garden of Eden, is looking out for men and women who turns back to him. And we saw it in chapter number five. We saw it in chapter number six. There were a couple of people who walked faithfully in the presence of God, who did everything right in the sight of God. Can I challenge you this morning with those two wonderful people? Are we able to walk faithfully in the presence of God? You can. Don't blame people around you because you, you know, could have blamed people around him, but no, he did not. He walked with God consistently. Don't bother about anybody. You can walk with God. Not only, not only he walked with God, he took care of his family as well. The Bible says, Enoch, when he was walking with God, he had children as well. He was a family man. So walking with God doesn't take you away from taking care of your family. Noah did everything which was right. And because he did everything which was right, he was protected from the wrath of God. He and his family, eight of them, were saved because they did exactly what the Lord told them to do. And I thank God for Noah's life. Again, we go further, but now I take you to a chapter, Genesis chapter number 22. Again, I take you to that word number 22, Genesis chapter number 22. We see the father of nations there. His name was Abraham. How did he do what he did? This is what the Bible talks about uh, Abraham in chapter number 22. God said to Abraham, Abraham, I want you to do me 
a thing. I want you to sacrifice your son, your son Isaac, that I have blessed you. Bring him and sacrifice in my presence. Go to Mount Moriah and I am wanting to see you sacrifice your son. What a father, what a father Abraham was. He did not ask any questions to God. The other day, my son was asking me, Dada, Abraham is a good negotiator. He negotiated with God. He was bargaining with God. But here in chapter number 22, he never bargained anything. He never spoke anything. If God has given, he has the right to ask back. And I should not ask anything. I bring my child onto the altar and sacrifice him onto God's altar. See what a father Abraham is. Today, I want to let you know. We should be able to come in the presence of God with a sacrificial heart. Whatever God requires from us, let us not take anything out from him. Bring it to God and say, God, this is me, Lord. This is my family, Lord. These are my children, Lord. I am bringing them to you. God is looking for those people who are obedient like Abraham. In fact, God tested Abraham. That is what the Bible says. God was testing Abraham whether he would sacrifice his son. And in the test, Abraham came victorious. Fathers, my men, I'm asking you this question. Women as well, don't take the service as just a men's service. But I'm asking the women as well. Are we obedient to God even if it matters our own, our own children? Does, it, does, does your obedience stop if God is asking something that you desire more? When God re requires our time, are we obedient to give our time to God? When God requires our money, are we obedient to give our money? If God requires our children for God's work, are we obedient to bring our children into God's presence and say, God, these are your gifts. I thank God for Hannah, who, who did not have a child, but got a baby and his name was Samuel. And she knew this child belongs to God. And she offered this child to the temple of God. Remember the story of Hannah and Samuel. Samuel was the first judge of Israel. If at all you give your child to God's work, if at all you contribute your family to God, if at all you do anything that the Lord desires for you to do, God will never put you down, my brother. God will never put you down, my sister. He will give you certain fuss in your life. He will make you the first of your family. He will make, make you the first of uh, among your friends and your colleagues. Uh, how many of us uh, are not getting those positions and privileges because we are, we are not obeying the Lord as we should be doing? So Genesis chapter number 22 talks about that. So I, 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 I'll wind down uh, the Old Testament in the book of Genesis and I will jump into uh, the, the New Testament. I start off with Matthew. Matthew's gospel chapter number 22 and the last verse, if at all you have read that beautiful verse, the last verse says, from that moment, nobody dared to ask Jesus any question. From that moment, chapter number 22 and the last verse, you see that from that moment, nobody dared to ask Jesus any question. They just, just heard what he said, because in that chapter, Jesus proclaims he is the son of God. Hallelujah. What a proclamation in chapter number 22 of uh, Matthew's gospel that Jesus proclaims uh, he is the son of God. Uh, he is the son of God. Uh, hallelujah. From the Garden of Eden, what we lost, uh, God had to reinstate. Uh, God had to bring us back. Uh, so Jesus came onto this planet 
earth and he became the son of God incarnate uh, even though he was uh, the son of Mary and Joseph here on this planet even though he had his brothers and sisters around him uh, he was uh, he was God incarnate uh, he was God who came in the body of you and me and he dwelt among us he was the son of God and from that day when people understood uh, he was talking about uh, that uh, that psalm which David wrote uh, it was about Jesus about the son of God from that day onwards nobody dared to ask any question uh, to Jesus <laughs> That's a beautiful thing, right? And I want to skip out. Uh, I want to go into the uh, the the very uh, very uh, beautiful gospel, gospel of Luke, Luke's gospel, chapter number twenty-two, chapter number twenty-two. Don't rem don't forget. This is all about an amazing twenty-two. I'm talking about. He talks about Luke when he comes to chapter number twenty-two. Again, he brings the picture of Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus asks, uh, "Who do people say I am? Who do people say I am? And uh, and uh, and what do you think I am?" And uh, there is a there is a affirmation of the purpose of why Jesus came on this planet Earth. Luke's Gospel, chapter number twenty-two. You start reading out those. Wonderful words. Uh, I will. I will try to. I will try to open it up, uh, and uh, I will read that uh, verse uh, in uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter number twenty-two. If at all you can turn with me as well, it will be quite good if you do that. Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives, uh, and then uh, in the last few verses, I I'm reading. This is what uh, uh, verse number sixty-nine. But from now on, see that verse number 69, but from now on, the son of man, meaning Jesus himself says, will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. You see that the purpose has been accomplished. The purpose has been accomplished even before the death and resurrection of Jesus because he knew he will do that. He knew for sure. These are the words of faith. Jesus says, from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of God Almighty. Hey, what a beautiful chapter 22. Making sure the people know he is the son of God. And in, in Luke's gospel, he is affirming that he will not be sitting here on earth forever. He will be going up into the heavenly places and he will be seated at the right hand of the heavenly father because he knows the plan that he came here for is to make a seat along with him in the heavenly places. Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, you and I who accept Jesus as their personal savior, you and I who know Jesus is our savior, he has given us a position. Come on, I want every man, every father to say, I have a position. Every mother, every sister to say, I have a position. Every child to say, I have a position. If you are told you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, Jesus has already given you a position. The position is you are in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. How did this all turn up? This all turned up by Jesus confirming about what is he going to do in Luke's gospel, chapter number 22. To, from now, from this time on, I am going to sit at the right hand of God Almighty. Hallelujah. What an amazing 22, isn't it? I've never seen Bible as these numbers are telling me, but I thought I, I, I want to turn 22. You want to turn 22 and let our eyes go into the chapters and verses what the Bible talks about in, in, in the Bible about 22. Too. And now I know we have a couple more minutes uh, and I want to take, go right into the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter number 
22. Come on. That's the last chapter. That's the last chapter. Chapter number uh, uh, 22. Revelation chapter number 22. Verse number 14. Come on. I'm reading it. Remember Genesis chapter number 3, verse number 22. Man and his wife were sent out of the Garden of Eden so that they don't eat the fruit of the tree of life. Here, verse number 14 of chapter number 22 says like this. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to eat from the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus, we are what we are today. But what we need to be doing in order to eat the fruit of the tree of life, we need to wash our robes. We need to wash our, our clothes that we are wearing. We need to wash who we are. We need to be cleansing our own, our own garment. We need, to, we need to ask the Holy Spirit, cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse my heart, Lord. Cleanse, uh, cleanse my, my, my behavior, Lord. Cleanse my eyes, Lord. Cleanse my ears, Lord. Cleanse my hands. Cleanse my feet. Whatever you think needs cleansing, ask the Lord to cleanse. Uh, we are the ones who wash our robes daily. Come on. I want everybody to say that. We are the ones who wash our robes daily and for us there is a reward and we are called blessed people you are a blessed person hallelujah you are a baruch you are a baruch in hebrew hallelujah you are a blessed person uh -huh. hallelujah 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 you are a makarios in greek that again i said you are a blessed person uh, when you are a blessed person you will want to wash yourself and when you wash yourself in that Holy Spirit, in the cleansing water that God has given to us, that the cleansing soap that the Lord has given to us, that is the word of God. When you do it regularly, you have an assurance. You will enter into that city. You will enter into that city, the city which was closed, the Garden of Eden that was closed. You and I will enter. I love that. You and I will enter. How are we going to do that? We are going to eat the fruit of life. What was taken away? What was refrained, what was blocked, has been given back to us. Hallelujah. God doesn't hold back anything from us forever. He will give it back to us. Uh, he has uh, a, a plan and we need to fall into the plan of God. We need to walk in the plans of God. And when we do that, he will embrace us because he is our heavenly father. Do you know the story of the prodigal son who had gone away from the father who had taken away all what had he had from as a share from his father he ate and slept and drank like any others that we see in the world had bad friends had bad connections he was far away from god but the father there in the picture was waiting every day was waiting every day so that his son can come back one day the son got up. How did he get up? With a realization, with a thought in my father's house. There are so many servants. They eat and they waste the food. I am a son of that father, but I am in a situation where I don't have food. And that realization of where he is provoked him to think this thought. He said, I will go to my father and apologize. I will say sorry. I don't deserve to be called your son uh, and take me as your servant. Uh, when you realize the, the position that you are, the sin that you are doing, you will not sit there. Some of, some of the people, even though they know that they have doing the mistakes, uh, they don't want to get up. 
I pray this morning, brother, my sister, my child, if God has enlightened you out of your mistake, you need to get up. Don't, don't, don't carry on your ego. Don't think what people will say, what pastor will think. It doesn't matter at all. You just get up from the filth. Once you get up, your eyes will open up. The roads will be open up and you will walk straight to the father's house. Even if you are away from the father's house, you know the root of the father's house. You know the word towards the father. You will come back. And I'm pretty sure many people who have mucked up their life have come to the father. I pray that anybody who is hearing me, any part of this world who has mucked up their life, have thought that there is no way out. Today, I'm showing you a way that is the way of the word. And this is the way that will make us come back to our father's house. And the Bible says like this, when the father saw the son walking from the far off distance, he ran to him. He ran to him. What a heavenly father we have. Have. Hallelujah. He will run to us uh, even before a word is spoken out of the mouth of the son. Uh, the father says, uh, prepare a celebration because the son was lost and now he is found. And today we are those people that the heavenly father is waiting and we need to come back. We need to rush back. We can't waste our time. We need to get back into that beautiful house. Hallelujah. The things around us are showing that the time of Jesus to come back is very, very soon. I do not know how many years. I do not know how many days uh, there are things around in this world that is happening to show my Jesus is going to come back very soon. One day he came as a child in the in in Bethlehem, but the next time he's going to come, he's going to come as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords, as the ruler, as the judge. Let us not fall into the wrath of the hands of God. Let us understand a loving father is waiting for you and me to embrace us. Who are we going now? Now it is your chance to get into the 22. Now it is your chance to embrace the 22. Can you become like Enoch? Can you become like Noah? Can you become like Abraham? Can you become like Jesus? Can you become that person who can walk into that temple of God, walk into that city of God to glorify the name of the Lord Almighty. Interestingly, there is no more 22s in the Bible because Revelation stops off in chapter number 22 and verse number 21. There is no verse number 22. Who is the 22? You and I are the 22. Let's get ready to embrace the word of God. Walk as an obedient servant of God. Walk as a faithful man and woman of God. And let us have that bold assurance. I am in this planet Earth for few years, few days, few, few, I do not know, for decades. But one thing is for sure. My eternity is not here on this earth. My eternity is up in heaven. Can I bless you in Jesus name? Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless your children who heard your word this morning. I release your blessing. I pray the power of your word will translate into blessing and uh, make them a blessing, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you for joining. Now we have Pastor George who is going to Plus every every father, uh, every man of our church, not only our church, he's going to bless all the men and the fathers around the world. And uh, uh, over to Pastor George. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful word today. A word of encouragement to us. The amazing goodness of God. And as we come this morning, we are particularly focusing in prayer on Father's Day. We think of the men and the fathers who have affected our lives and watched over us over many years. 
But firstly, I want to give thanks to the one true heavenly Father. Lord, draw us all close to yourself, for you are the one who is faithful and full of unconditional love. We saw that this morning in the sharing of the prodigal son, how you, Father, wait patiently and you will accept us and draw us into yourself. We give you thanks today. We thank you, Lord, today is Father's Day. We give thanks and we pray abundant blessings and favor on all the fathers, the grandfathers, the stepfathers, and all the men who provide leadership, guidance, care, and protection for all their families and others around them. Lord, I remember with thanksgiving our forefathers, the fathers who have passed away but have left a heritage with us. They left us with lessons and admonitions and thoughts that have influenced our lives for good. We pray for the fathers separated from us by the COVID lockdowns, by time and distance. I pray for those who have been fathers for a number of years that are growing in their roles. I pray that you grant them insight and wisdom and the grace of the Holy Spirit. I pray today for new fathers who are stepping out in the excitement of the adventure of bringing up a child in the ways of the Lord. I bless them. I recognize the father's sacrifices and contributions to their family. I recognize today strength and pray for it in fresh measure. I pray protection around fathers. I pray for wisdom. I pray for discernment. I pray that the tenderness of the Holy Spirit will be their portion. I pray for patience as we walk in days that test us to the very limits. Lord, meet all the needs of fathers, keeping their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. I pray that they walk daily ever closer to you, Lord. I pray for courage and boldness in these days of challenge and change. I pray today particularly for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. I pray that fathers that I pray for today will always be alert for an enemy that seeks to pull them down. I pray that fathers would become watchmen on the walls of his household. Raise up our fathers, Lord, as mighty men, godly men in this generation, those that will know their God and do exploits, men of faith, prayerful, filled with compassion, love, joy, faithfulness, and great peace. Mm -hmm. Lord, let all the fathers represented here know and honor you with their whole lives. I pray that you show them how to grow in love and passion for you, Lord, and for their children and their families. I pray, Father, that you would strengthen the bonds of love and deepen their relationships with each other and their children. In Malachi 4, verse 6, Lord, it says that you will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. And Lord, I pray a special impartation of that word in to each family that hears my word spoken today. That, oh God, I pray for the fathers to be able to bring peace and glory into their family lives, to give insight and skills to the bringing up of their children in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. I pray, Lord, for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. I pray for gentleness upon all the men who lead their families, and their children. I thank you, Lord, for men leading according to your statutes, laying down their lives to raise up godly and greatly blessed children and a holy heritage. I pray for fathers this Father's Day that you, Lord, will help them produce eternal fruit, that, Lord, they would cause generational blessings to be poured out until you return. I pray for families 
living in the way that you intend, growing in grace and Christ-like character with these fathers, each one loving, caring examples for their children to be nurtured and building for the generations, praying, talking, and showing their children uh, the way to walk in the ways of the Lord. Today on this special Father's Day, fill each Father Lord with the best of your blessing. Let them be very conscious of your loving care and presence throughout this day. Give a fresh impartation for all that their roles of fathers require. So one day, each one will hear your ultimate words of praise. Well done, my son. Well done. And so we ask these things in the mighty and precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.